Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back, and I feel like talking about some people. Let me start out by saying this before we get into, uh, girl, the other topics. Laverne Cox. Laverne Cox. Girl, you're tacky. Girl, you're tacky, bitch. Girl, um, what you brought up on that red carpet with Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith is the reason why you might get banned, okay? Girl, so for those who don't know, the other night was some awards show. I think the SAG Awards... And Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith, they stopped um, by um, Laverne. I think she's a, I think she's a, um, I think she works for E! News now. Um, and towards the end of the interview, I just saw, it's just a small clip that's going around. Um, she was basically, you know, saying, oh, hope to see you soon at the Red Table Talk. Um, and then she brought up the entanglement. <laughs> She brought the word entanglement. Laverne, no tea, no shade. This was not like, girl, should Laverne have gotten popped by Jada or Will? No. First of all, Will is a whole man, okay? But should Jada have popped uh, um, La Laverne woman to woman, okay? Because I know Jada wanted to. I'm going to give Laverne a pass. Because the reason, I think that Laverne was probably nervous, right? I think that this is a new gig for Laverne. Um, I think that Laverne probably had to fill some space. And that was probably the first thing that popped in her, uh, popped in her mind. I thought it was tacky. I thought it was tacky. I thought it was tacky. I thought it was inappropriate. I said, girl, is this the hip hop award show? <laughs> girl, I'm sorry. I just, girl, I hate to be that. I hate to say it that way. Like, it would have been acceptable at the BET uh, hip hop award show. It wouldn't have, it, it shouldn't have been discussed really on any red carpet. I'm sorry. You know, sometimes I'm a little, I'm, sometimes I'm a little square. Okay. <laughs> I said, LeBron, you done lost your job. Girl, you just. You just got this job and you lost it that fast, <laughs> okay? Girl, you need to go home and brush up on your in on your interviewing skills, mama. You bringing up the wrong stuff at the wrong time. Girl, talking about entanglements. Girl, how about we bring up unemployment office? How about that? Because if, if Will and Jada start throwing that power around, <laughs> girl, that's what you're going to be. Now, I know Will and Jada are not going to fool with you. They probably just giggled it off and called you when they walked on. Did you hear what that man? I heard him. I ought to go over there and pop in her face. No, nah, we 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 got our good clothes on tonight. We got our good sun. We got our Sunday's best on. Just leave it alone. Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Miss Wendy Williams. <laughs> Girl, I'm so sick of her. Y'all know I love. Y'all know I got a soft spot for Wendy, but that soft spot is getting harder and harder and harder every week. <laughs> okay. Anyways, girl, so her husband, here go her husband, ex-husband, at this point, ex-husband, husband, um, I'm sure Wendy probably want him to be her husband again. So according to Radar Online, Wendy Williams' ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, sues talk show producers for $10 million. So Wendy Williams' ex-husband, Kevin Hunter is taking her, wait, oh, I'm sorry. Wendy Williams' ex-husband, Kevin Hunter, is taking her show producers to federal court, accusing them of wrongful termination. According to court documents obtained by Radar, Kevin is suing the production company, Debmar Mercury, along with execs, Ira Bernstein and Mort Marcus. The lawsuit was filed in New York court earlier today. The Shade Room was the first to report on the suit. In the suit, Kevin explains Ira and Mort found Debmar in 2004. In 2007, the company began neg negotiations with Williams and her husband for a six-week trial for a talk show. Kevin says he represented his then wife during the talks. Kevin was used to being, it was used to being behind the scenes of William's prior ventures and used and use his business business knowledge and street smarts to negotiate a significant financial increase from the initial contract being offered to Williams, the suit reads. 
The talk show premiered in 2008 and was immediately a breakout hit, a breakthrough hit. The Wendy Williams show dominated the 10 a.m. morning time slot and, and to date, no network has been able to beat the show at this time slot, The Suit Reads. Kevin says he was instrumental to the show's success and planned most of the concepts and branding behind the show. Kevin served as executive producer of the Wendy Williams show from 2007 and 2000, until 2019. He was asked to leave the show after Williams filed for divorce due to him having an alleged affair. Girl, we still saying alleged? <laughs> after him having an alleged affair with a woman named Sharina Hudson and having a love child. And this, let me tell you something, that's the best, see, this, this is what happens, well, clearly it's not happening anymore, but this is what happens when you, that, that's the consequence, okay? The consequence of you destroying the marriage and the business is that you don't get to be a part of the business and the marriage anymore. See, that was, that, that was the consequence. The consequence to Kevin not doing what he should have been doing was to take him up. You don't get to be a part of this ride no more. Your stop is right here. Get out the car and tell that other to come pick you up with that car seat in the back. All right? Because you can't get it. You, you're not. This, this ride is over. But see, now it looked like Kevin found his way back into the car. All right? We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, in the suit, Kevin says he created Hot Topics and Shoe Cam, had the final say on guest develop marketing plans and tours to boost ratings in low market television areas, develop the relationship between the show and various media outlets, help bridge the gap between the show and the African American community due to Deb Mard's lack of understanding. Um, the sh I'm sorry, due to, due to Deb Mard's lack of understanding the show's audience and hiring and developing security personnel and security planning for Williams. Kevin lists a variety of other roles he claims to have had at the show. In the suit, I'm going to go ahead and say it. And I believe him. Now, I believe that he was doing all this stuff. Now, was it wrongful termination? I don't think, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer, I don't know. But do I believe he was doing all this stuff? Yes. Kevin had a, baby, Kevin had a chokehold on that show. Kevin had, baby, have you heard the stories even from Andy Cohen? Talking about how they could not get in contact with Wendy Williams. Kevin had that whole show on lock. He had Wendy Williams on lock. So do I believe he had a hand in all of this? Stuff? Absolutely. Um, try for the mother. In the suit, Kevin says. Um, okay, Kevin lists a variety of other roles he claims to have had at the show. In the suit, Kevin says he was wrongfully terminated in April 2019. Is it wrongful termination? See, I don't know. And I'm not going to get on her acting like I know. But I always feel like at jobs like this, there's something in some type of paperwork that you done sign that say if you embarrass this company, your ass is out the door. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It's like an eth 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 ethics clause, right? has to do with your integrity. You're more like, it's something. It's always something. It's something, right? Where if you embarrass or do something that's outside of the standards of this company, you could be released at any time. The termination of Kevin was based strictly... Okay, let me start over. I'm sorry. In the suit, Kevin says he was wrongfully terminated in April 2019. The termination of Kevin was based strictly upon Kevin's marital status and his impending divorce to the show's host, ignoring all the contributions that Kevin made um, that Kevin made to make the show a success. Kevin explains the Wendy Williams show is ending after this season and she will be replaced by Sherry Shepard. Williams has been MIA uh, for, from the show for months while she deals with medical issues. Um, the suit says producers announced they plan to use many of the elements from the from the Williams show on the new show. I know you're fucking lying. I don't know if this is true or not, but if they are doing that, it's whack. 
Y'all keep on y'all keep on trying to get make it make it seem as though Sherry only taking over the time slot. No, it sounds like Sherry is taking over the show. It's a difference. If you still gonna be using some of the stuff that Wendy Williams uh used, I need Sherry to be in a whole different building on the other side of town for you to convince me that she didn't take over the Wendy Williams show. If she's still in that same building, as far as I'm concerned, that's Wendy Williams. Show. Kevin says um, that the show never recovered after he left. <laughs> they underestimated his value. He's demanding seven to ten million dollars in damages. I mean, is there some truth in this? Let's talk about like, is there some truth in this? Yeah, is some truth in this? The show, it really been a hot mess since Kevin left, but. I don't think that that has anything to do with them. I think that has to do with Wendy and her being weak for a nook who did her dirty. Don't get in my comment section talking about girl. They was married. They was married. They was married for 30 years. Because I used to be like, you know what? I definitely saw it saw that Wendy was probably moving the way that she was moving because she had been married to that man for so long, right? So I understand it from that situation, especially when she was trying to separate, you know, the business, right? So I got why she was moving the way that she was moving because it's like, girl, I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta take my time because this nigga know all my business. He know what the money at. He know, uh, he know the code to the safe, right? So I get it from that, from that, you know, point. Um, point of view, but other than that, girl, the ring didn't mean a thing. Okay, the ring didn't mean didn't mean a thing. Who told y'all that? Wasn't that Candy and that white woman down there in Real Housewives of Atlanta? The ring didn't mean a thing because if it did, girl, he wouldn't have been knowing he was doing it. The ring really meant something. See, that's the real gag. Y'all put so much into the fact that that was married for so long, but the truth of the matter is that ring didn't mean a goddamn thing. Them vows that they took before God, whether it was at the courthouse or whatever, didn't mean shit. Because if it did, he wouldn't have had a baby and a whole other family on the other side of town. Now, again, is Kevin okay? Is Kevin, is Kevin, I mean, he's suing. I mean, just because somebody sued don't mean nothing. Because people sue all the time and lose. Is he suing because he knows that he deserves this? Why are you suing now, Kevin? Wendy, why is Kevin suing now? Right after they give you your walking papers and say your show was canceled because you can't make it to work. Wendy, why is, why is Kevin suing now? I know Kevin ain't got into your ear no more. He has. Girl, he has. I need Wendy to stand up. Okay? Stand up! And act like you got some pussy. Okay? And stop letting this nigga run over you. And stop letting him make money off your name so he can take it to that other bitch over there. You need to move just like him. Why is Kevin suing now? Why is Kevin suing now that the relationship between Wendy and Deb Mar Mercury is pretty much over? He's in Wendy's ear. That's what I think. I don't know that to be true, but based off of the reports, right, the things that we've seen, I think that is true. I think that Kevin has made his way back into the Wendy Williams ear and she is eating up every word. Wendy clearly is not a businesswoman. Because if she was a businesswoman, things wouldn't have went the way that they went when Kevin was no longer a part of the business. I get it, everybody's not business savvy. But I think that after being in the business for so long, like it's one thing for me not to know something, you know, how, the, how, how my business would run, but baby, after 20, 30 years, honey, I need to know how this ship is running, honey, because I'm the captain of this ship, okay? So I need to know how everything go. I'm not giving no man that, that much power. 
God don't even want you in my business quiet as this cup. You can be my man. <laughs> I don't want you in my business. Because you got your own business to worry about. See, that's the problem, though. These niggas don't be having their own business to worry about. Girl. From Kevin to Kelly Rowland's husband, right? To Monique's husband, to, uh, to, to Ken Do, Mary's husband. They don't have no business. So they latch onto these women and make their business their business. But if you really had your own business going on, you wouldn't have time to be worried about my business. There's too many talented people in Hollywood. Or just too many, not even Hollywood, too many talented people, period, for Wendy to be that lost without Kevin Hunter. Here's something else that I saw from the Jasmine brand. Where is it at? Where is it at? Is this it? Okay, here we go. Wendy Williams' publicist calls out the former rep over his remarks about talk show host. You wouldn't refer to your you wouldn't refer to your client's show as the maybe Wendy show, which was shade directed towards Wendy. Uh, Wendy Williams and her publicist Sean Zanotti, um, she's a black woman. Or not? I went to her Instagram page. Um, are not too fond of the recent statements made by her former rep, Howard Bragman. In fact, Zanotti says Bragman's comments were not in the best interest of Wendy. As previously reported, the Wendy Williams show is coming to an indefinite end soon. And Sherry Shepard, 54, were, where are we talking? Y'all know what's going on with the Wendy Williams show. Um... Basically, the statement that was put out by the guy Howard was not in the best interest of Wendy. You wouldn't refer to your client's show as the Maybe Wendy show, which was shade directed towards Wendy. To further go on to question the validity of her verified IG page is even more proof that this was not in the best interest of Wendy. Knowing he hasn't spoken to her. The social media post response is, uh, is additional evidence that he hasn't had any recent communication with her by saying, so when my old friend Wendy FaceTimes me personally, it comes off as a bullying tactic and a forced response just to be a part of the conversation, which shows it's more than him than about Wendy. Look, I didn't know nothing about this. I'm going to say this much. Sean Zan Zanotti. She sounds like she's great at what she does. However, like I talked about this the other night, and this according to page six. In the other corner is Thomas and Williams, purported new publicist, Sean Zanotti. I think I'm saying her name wrong. Both of whom work with Williams' ex-husband, um, Hunter, Kevin Hunter. Ain't no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell. Sean Girl, like I said, you might be great at what you do, but ain't no way in hell. If you are, if this is true, if you are attached or if you are cool or if you did work for Kevin or if you were in the picture prior because of Kevin, you will be in the picture right now. Anything that had to do with Kevin, bitch, don't bring him back over here no more. I don't trust him. Your loyalty is more than likely to Kevin. I don't give a damn what nobody got to say. Anything that had to do with Kevin Hunter... Anybody that was associated with Kevin Hunter snatched their ass out the picture and they ain't coming back. <laughs> it's that goddamn simple. Y'all better start running y'all business like a business. Stop trusting everybody with your goddamn money. Stop trusting everybody with information that they don't have no business being privy to. Why the fuck do I even got mad? Kamora Lee Simmons. The, the nice accusations that she helped husband Tim Lesnar hide millions of dollars of, embe of embezzlement money. Girl, come on. Bitch, you in trouble. <laughs> bitch, while you was on the phone the other day talking about hyping them Kardashians up, talking about can't no bitch come in here and steal your man, hyping them up, hyping them up like, girl, they guys give to girl. <laughs> girl, these niggas act like it though, girl. You should have been worried about that white man of yours because he got your ass one foot in jail, bitch. All right. Kamora Lee Simmons is asserting her innocence after being dragged into her husband's embezzlement trial. Lawyers for baby fat owner and fashionista Kamora Lee Simmons say that despite claims made against her, she is innocent of any wrongdoing in her husband Tim Lesnar's embezzlement scheme and adamantly claims that she did not help him hide money. Now, girl, just a few months ago, I, I girl, matter of fact, I went back and I looked at the video. Remember I talked about Kamora. This is about nine months ago. 
I talked about Kamora because Rosa said that they were stealing. And I didn't really touch on it. I just touched on the fact that, girl, it seemed real iffy and because Rosa over there in Bali hiding, right? Because, uh, you know, he got those accusations over here. Um, that girl, he might want to leave Kamora alone because Kamora know all the skeletons are hidden, right? That's what I basically said. Um, the trial against former Goldman Sachs star executive banker Tam Lesnar and his associates Roger Ng and Joe Lowe continues and it's now involving the banker's estranged wife, former runway model Kamora Lee Simmons. According to recent reports, um, lawyers for, I can't remember, it's, 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 it's his, his last name is N.G. I'm just going to call him N. Girl. N, who Lesnar is testifying against as a mastermind planner and defrauding the 1MDB Sovereign Development Fund are asking the court to, uh, judge to allow him to present evidence that Kimora helped her husband launder $80 million of stolen money from 1MDB by using multiple. Reportedly, Kimora is listed as the owner of shell companies registered in Seychelles, Delaware, and California that were used by Lesnar to funnel illegal cash. In legal document, documents, in lawyers also claim the 46-year-old fashion mogul and her 50-year-old banker husband traveled in 2018 for the express purpose of creating a trust for a set protection, asset protection hiding Lesnar's illegal gotten gains, which had been transferred to Ms. Simmons, um, Lesnar's name. However, Kimora's legal team denies all allegations and says that Kimora, they say she's she innocent, girl. Girl, Kimora! Bitch. Oh, Kimora, girl. When I tell you, baby, y'all be getting with these men and these men be wearing y'all ass out. Girl, they be wearing y'all asses out. Come on, bitch, you got one foot in prison. Bitch, your ass, you look like your new name about to be Kamora Lee Simmons, a.k.a. Great Inmate 572. That's 0057. Bitch, you better take your ass to Bali with your ex husband, okay? Because they coming for your ass. Now, I don't know if it's going to help you take you go over there, but girl. Ain't nobody bothering Russell no more. Going up, Target to raise its minimum wage. To $24 an hour. I might, I might go give me a little point time. <laughs> I might even go give me a couple of hours, girl. Because I got it's some shoes that I want. It's some shoes that I want, girl. You know, that's what my, my mind be on shoes. Um, neighbors, it looks like Target has raised its minimum wage again. According to CBS, workers at Target stores and distribution centers in places like New York where competition for finding and hiring staff is the fiercest, could start seeing wages as high as $24 an hour this year. This is a big jump from its current rate of $15. So it looks like it's just going to be in certain places. Um, I don't think they're going to be raising the girl's uh, minimum wage to $24 in Houston. Um... The new starting wage is part of the company to spend an additional $300 million on its labor force this year, which also includes health coverage for its workers. We want to continue to have an industry leading position, said Target CEO Brian Cornell. Look, I don't know. Like I said, just it, 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 y'all hear what I just read. I don't know if it's going to be everywhere, every city, every state, every Target. Um, $24 is cute, right? Um, girl, all the girls gonna be full time though. See, that's the real gag. See, this what that's what the see. This is the thing, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to be the negative Nancy. I don't want to be the be the pessimist, right? But girl, the thing is, these girls be hiring. Girl, they will raise the wage, but then cut your hours. So, girl, you could go around bragging like, girl, bitch, I make, I make $24 an hour. But, girl, you only got 12 hours a week. And a lot of these companies, if you're not full-time, you don't get it benefits. They're just not handing benefits over to, uh, to somebody who work 20 hours a week. 
who just doing a little part-time gig after their other gig, right? I think it's sad that people got to work more than one job just to make a living anyway. This is one thing if you're trying to be a millionaire or a billionaire. Girl, we know one job ain't going to cut it. But I just think it's sad that people have to work more than one job just to make an honest living. It's really sad that girls is out here working 80 hours a week and off, girl, one day sometimes just to pay the bills and just to have a decent life, just to take the family on a vacation every once every two or three years. Girl, oh, uh, uh, it's a mess. That's what they need to be worried about, okay? But yeah, I just want to know, I don't know if this 24 hours is going to, 24 hours, it's $24 an hour, how it's going to actually work. Because again, sometimes these companies, um, they will raise the minimum wage. However, they will cut, they will reduce hours. Um, I would want to know if these people that are making 24, uh, these, these, these areas where they will increase um, the minimum wage to $24 an hour, will these be all full-time employees? Will they all be, or will they all qualify for benefits? Like what's T? Don't raise my bitch quiet as it's kept. Sometimes, as crazy as it may sound, sometimes you might be better making $15 an hour and getting 40 hours a week. You'll come out probably better because then you'll still have your benefits. You'll still, you know, you'll be full time. You're probably making more money versus the bitch who making $24 an hour and only getting seven hours a week. <laughs> so it's kind of like, oh, girl, leave me where I'm at. Leave me where I'm at. <laughs> I'm, good at this. I'm good at my $16. I'm good. Thank you. Right, because as soon as y'all cut this up, bitch, the, the, it's gonna be up, but then, bitch, I'm gonna be stuck <laughs> right here, anyways. But if not, if Target is out here, girl, giving a girl $24 an hour, and girl, no matter what, my how many, no matter how many hours you bring in, you'll still qualify for benefits and all that, girl, I might go put me an application in if they make their way down here to Houston, Texas, girl, I just want about $10 a week. I don't like to work. So give me about 10 hours a week. That's all I want. Good matter of fact, I just come in one day. Give me eight hours. I'm just trying to get some shoes. Girl, I, I, this check just going towards clothes and shoes. That's it. You know, I bet y'all be like, nigga, you get on here with the same t-shirts and shoes, the, the same t-shirts and hats on. What clothes, girl? But yeah, I'm, I just want eight hours a week. Eight. <laughs> just one day. I come in. Girl, matter of fact, just let me come in like probably like overnight because I don't want to see nobody. I don't like people in my face. <laughs> I'm that type of worker. <laughs> I'm working overnight. I don't want nobody in my face. And then when somebody do got a question, I, I look at them, look at them when I like fucking out, like I got an attitude. Girl, no, I'm actually nice. I'm a nice. I'm a nice girl. I used to train people too. Well, we all used to train people, but girl, um, when it was a night shift. I used to, um, I trained the girls for a couple of weeks because, girl, she know what she doing. But the girls don't be willing to listen. <laughs> That's why they get the boot <laughs> when, when season will be open. I tried to tell you. You ain't want to listen. You thought you knew everything. I'm going to have a job. <laughs> Anyways, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.